Uh, Leicester City are plus 120. This is another Tuesday kickoff, afternoon kickoff. They're hosting Fulham. Fulham's plus 210. The draw here is plus 260. Fulham with another win. Uh, We were all on Southampton in that one, and it didn't go well. So fraudulent, though. That win was fraudulent. And it, it just, just, it, this is a, it's a, fr- this is a frustrating spot. Cause if you, you can't, asked, you can't if, lay if Southampton you, here. You just can't. If, if, yeah. Lesser. If, 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 or if sorry, you, excuse me. I'm a wrong match. I was say, like, <laughs> if I, uh, if you had, t- if you had given me, if you said, oh, like, you know, you're obviously going to go against Fulham again after that performance, what spot would you not do it? I probably would have said Lester as a home favorite. Like that, oh, yeah, 100%. this is the worst, the worst spot for it. Uh, Cause I want to go against Fulham, but the price and the team is just not even close to good enough. So uh, this is a pass for me, uh, unfortunately, cause uh, it's, it's tough. Anthony, what do you have? Yeah. Friend of the pod. It's funny. You, you said that story. Cause friend of the pod, H U Capper was also on uh, Southampton over the weekend and he DM me right after the match and was like, they're at Leicester. Like, we, uh, we, like, what do you think fade him? I'm like, that's the, the one spot I will <laughs> never, I, like, the, like I said last week, uh, and they lost at Liverpool, and and it was kind of funny. Wout phase with two two own goals. Uh, they weren't good in that match either. Leicester, uh, I didn't upgrade them off of that. I didn't think they were particularly impressive in any shape or way or form against Liverpool. Uh, but yeah, I mean Le- Leicester's slightly better on like XG difference. I don't really think they're that much better. I think that they're like pretty even teams, and so you have Leicester as a small home favorite, and I, I don't really like want to bet Lester ever this season, unless the market just craters on them, which I don't see happening. So yeah, this is not going to be a lesser spot for me, but it is the two teams all year that I keep losing money on these unders. I'm going back to the well <laughs> again on the under two and a half. I mean, Fulham did nothing, nothing in that entire game against Southampton. The first goal came off of a set piece, but it wasn't the set piece itself. It was the ball fl- deflected out to Pereira. He hit a shot it was going way wide, hit Ward Prowse's foot, and then went into the top corner. And then the second goal was a nice set piece header. I have to give them credit for that. But they created less than one expected goal in that match at home against Southampton. Fulham, the attack continues to just run on. They have one way of scoring goals. Crosses. And, 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 it's, and it just keeps working. And like maybe all season long, Fulham will just over, and for a year and a half now, like I keep saying this every week, I'm, I'm a broken record. But like when you only have plan A and plan A keeps working, eventually like there, there has to be some time where plan A doesn't work and you, your attack kind of falls apart. And I think that's coming for Fulham at some point here. Uh, like, yes, they're third and crosses completed in the penalty area. Lester is decent, not good at stopping crosses either. So like that is a bit of a red flag, but uh, this Lester team, another team that just can't get the ball into the penalty area consistently to create chances. They are going to be the favorite they're going to have most of the possession. So I'll, uh, I'll roll with the under two and a half plus money. Uh, it's 3 PM kickoff on, on Tuesdays United glory, glory, man, United they're back. They've been pretty good. Uh, we'll see for a while now. Uh, they're hosting Bournemouth United's minus minus three fifty. a big favorite, uh, biggest favorite on, on, on the board this week. Bournemouth's 10 to one. The draw is plus four fifty. Not a spot for me um, to, to go. So I'm just going to turn this one over to you guys because you guys both have plays. So uh, BJ, we'll start with you. The, the, the spot is the FA Cup this this weekend, Michael, against, yeah, against Mighty right. Mighty Everton. That's um, right. No, uh, yeah, no, I like a bull team to score no here at minus 110. Uh, I think what you're seeing here is that ever since United got just absolutely throttled by Man City on October 2nd, they've conceded 7.6 expected goals in their last nine matches. They've just been playing much, much better defensively. And the, where the, where they've actually improved is defending inside their own penalty area. Like they are in the bottom half of the Premier League and passes allowed and touches allowed in the penalty area, but they're top five in big scoring chance allowed. Now they're top five and in, in XG allowed per set piece, which is basically how Bournemouth creates all of their, their chances. I mean, Bournemouth, we're, we're 17 matches into the season. They've created 8.7 expected goals from open play. Like they have scored 13 off of them, which shows that they're just finishing at a crazy rate. And you're starting to see that regression come down over these last two matches. But again, but then the flip side of that is okay. Manchester United, they've created over two expected goals in their last two matches against Nottingham forest and wolves, which is great. But now, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo's obviously moved on. 
a Rashford Martial attack is fine, but I mean, Rashford's only been a 0.34 XG per 90 minute striker this season. Like Martial's played four full nineties. So to say United's going to become this great offense that's going to create over two expected goals or average over one and a half, I think is a little bit far fetched. Obviously, they're playing Bournemouth, who is not that great of a defense, like they're 15th and non penalty expected goals allowed. But I really don't see a scenario where Bournemouth is going to create over 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 expected goals. And then it's just basically coming down to variance. So, and again, United's really good at defending set pieces. So, uh, but I have both teams score no projected at minus 142. I like the value on minus 110. I'm taking both teams score no instead of under three because I'm very, very scared of a United three nothing, four nothing route. Um, and I'm showing more value on both teams score no. So that's where I'm going in this one. Hey, Anthony, you're, you're back in that route. Yeah, it, it's gotten so bad for Bournemouth that when I was doing prep before the show, I tried to pull up their FB ref page and it was down for maintenance. <laughs> so you can't even you can't even look at Bournemouth stats on FB ref anymore because they are so bad. And, and we have to go back to what we said at the beginning of the season on them, which was coming in like, how are they going to score goals? And then they just scored a shit ton of goals for like half the season. But they're starting to come back down to earth now. I mean, you look at it. They didn't score against Chelsea, didn't create much of anything, didn't score against Palace, didn't create much of anything. The only game, uh, you know, where they've looked competent and going forward was the uh, Everton match. They had a couple of flute goals against two, two Everton off of matches set, off of set two Everton matches, Anthony. Right. Uh, but now they go on the road to United. And I think BJ made a good point about the set pieces. Like Bournemouth needs set pieces to score. It's probably their best way of getting at United and United has been very good defensively on set pieces. And that's been the case uh, throughout the entire season. So I think it's very hard to see Bournemouth scoring here instead of taking the minus minus one twenty, I'm going to take a plus one ten on United shutout victory uh, to win to nil because I do think United will win here and, and doesn't really have much of a problem uh, at the other end with Bournemouth, who uh, continue to be a fade candidate. And we've been talking about this. Uh, the, the regression is continuing to come for them. And uh, there's not really any end in sight. I think they're, they're going down. 